And we are back. And so we are going to talk a little bit today about structure of crystalline materials. So we start with crystal materials first. Well, one, because many, many materials are crystalline. There's many more interesting ones that are non-crystalline. But if we're talking about structure and we're trying to kind of learn about uh, kind of the structure of these materials, and again, this is probably a review of what you've kind of seen previously. So we're going to go through this somewhat quick. Um, but if you need to kind of go through it a little bit more slowly, um, I have my other videos on here. But a crystal, uh, crystalline structures are easiest to kind of look at concepts of short range order, SRO, and long range order, LRO. Every material has short range order. I know that if I have oxygen, oxygen has to double bond to oxygen. Um, long range order is, I could have long range orientational order. I could have long range translational, LTRO, translational order. I could have lots of different long range order. But basically I can predict in long range order, there's a certain lattice. There's a certain repeated structural units. There's some repeat structure in my material that I can kind of predict and then if we kind of take to the kind of extreme extent, I could predict it all the way to infinity. So that is the easiest thing to study because short range order is much more difficult because we can't predict this. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and let's look into it. So long range order again, both orientational, translational, and there's lots of different, again, this is not a structure class, but you can get in a lot of primitive lattices, lattice constants, interaction angles, symmetry, point symmetry, Bravais lattices, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, what is a lattice? I keep saying this term. A lattice is just a periodic array of points, a 1D or 2D. Um, and I could describe a 2D lattice by two basis vectors and some interactional angle. Um, so once I have that, I can basically extend those into infinity. Um, so I'll know every single point that can ever exist uh, in the universe in, if, if that has a periodic structure that repeats forever and ever and ever. So. How do we choose those angles? Well, to predict or actually to create a primitive lattice, I need to create a primitive lattice cell. So I'm gonna pick two lattice vectors. There's gonna be some angle between them. So let's say, and usually if I wanna uh, pick my primitive basis set, so to have a primitive basis, I need to have a primitive unit cell. So let's say I choose the ones that are already kind of shown here. So I choose these as my basis vectors, two. In 3D, 2D, I need two basis vectors, one interaction angle. In 3D, I need three interaction angles and then three, um, three interaction angles and three basis vectors. But let's say I choose these. So I could kind of translate this here, here. So this would be my cell, my primitive lattice cell. How many atoms are in this cell? Well, you'd count one, two, three, four atoms, but realize that I could translate the vector or cell over here. I could translate a cell over here. I could translate a cell over here. I could translate another cell over here. I could translate another cell over here, another cell over here, another cell over here, another cell over here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see each of these atoms, and I'll erase it here, here is shared by how many cells? One, two, three, four in my original set. What about this atom right here? One, two, three, four. What about this one? So you can see here that each of these is going to be really a fourth. So I've chosen a primitive basis set because my primitive cell is primitive. It's a primitive unit cell, there's only one atom. What if I were to draw a basis set like this? Well, then my cell would be like this. And then you can kind of see here, corners are still gonna be shared. So a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, a fourth. But you can see here, this is only gonna be shared by two atoms or two cells, so this will be a half. So fourth, 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 half, 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 half. So one from the quarters, half, one, two, and then I have a whole one in the middle. That's three, that's definitely not a primitive basis set. So you can see, actually here's a rectangular one as well. So different axis angle, but again, same thing. Cell here, cell here, cell here, cell here, cell here, et cetera, et cetera. So quarter, 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 I'm good to go. So there are a myriad of different symmetry operations. We kind of talked a little bit about translational. I talked a little bit, you can mirror, you can translate it. You can have glide symmetry, rotational symmetry. This is not a structure class, but there are 230 space groups. There's 32 crystallographic point groups. There's 14 Bravis lotus, uh, lattices. We'll discuss those actually. And six crystal systems, six crystal systems um, if you kind of get into your structure um, class. But in this course, we're gonna focus on six crystal systems. Um, We'll show you all of these, but we're gonna focus primarily on hexagonal and cubic because many of the materials that we look at in mechanics are 
have a crystal, have a cubic or a hexagonal structure. Um, and you can actually visualize them a lot in Mathematica as well. So before we get into that, uh, we have to take a step back and we are going to look at how do we describe, actually, before we get into the, the crystallographic directions, these are our crystal structures. So six crystal structures, cubic, hexagonal, monoclinic, orthorhombic, triclinic, tetragonal. And you can see here that cubic has the highest symmetry. Why? Because you could see this, these distances are all the same in a cube. My angles are all the same as a 90. Um, but once you get into some of these other crystal systems, triclinic, horrible symmetry. This idea of high symmetry here, if I have high symmetry, if I have these, all of these, you know, basically these distances and angles the same, I'm going to likely have material properties that are the same in all directions. A material that has the same properties in the same directions is called isotropic. If I have differing material properties in different directions, like hexagonal, for example, I'll have an anisotropic material. This is going to be critical when we go through this and we start to kind of look at some of our um, basically other material properties uh, that basically don't vary as a function of directions, but we'll have to go through directions first. But this is our kind of introduction to 2D lattices and crystal structures. And so next time we're going to have a fun time with um, basically directions. But we are gonna focus primarily on analyzing these structures because this will not only be important in terms of mechanical properties, but also how basically defect reactions move and go through materials. So we will see you all next time when we get into directions. Bye.